Hola a todos, welcome back to Español con Patri, Spanish with Patri. Yo soy Patri, this is Patri. And today, what are we going to be talking about? Something muy importante, very important, because today I'm going to be giving you the top 10 must-have meals that you simply can't miss if you go to Spain. Are you ready? Vamos! these meals are according to my opinion and I think my opinion in this topic is pretty reliable I am a foodie I do like to go out and taste different meals and this for me are some of the best ones I've taken loads of people to Spain with me from the United States from England and this is what I give them to try and they love it okay are you ready venga la primera numero uno what do you think this is gonna be Paella! Oh, come on, the Spanish national dish, it had to be that one, paella. Although, did you know that paella originated in the region of Valencia, in a little region called Albufera. Albufera, my parents have a holiday home near Albufera, and I go there very, very often, so I'm very lucky I can taste the best rice in Spain very often. But that is where you can have the best paella, in the region of Valencia, and the more traditional one, even though many places do it very well in Spain. Careful with the pronunciation. Pa. E ya. Smile in that e. Pa. E. Ya. Please do not say paella and do not say paella. I, I get it. It's quite tricky to pronounce. And to be honest with you, I hear non Spanish speakers pronouncing this one wrong all the time, even if their Spanish level is pretty good. So remember, paella. Now, let's get into a controversial topic, shall we say. Paella can have many different ingredients. The traditional ingredients, however, are grain rice, arroz. In Valencia, they sometimes use a type of rice called arroz bomba. Green beans, judías verdes, rabbit, conejo. Mm -hmm. We eat conejo in Spain. Chicken, pollo. And sometimes you can have uh, other beans, like butter beans. You cook that in the broth with saffron, paprika. Now, importante, when you're in Spain and you're ordering paella, you have a lot of different varieties, especially if you're in an arroceria. You can either order the paella, the usual one, the regular one, with verduras and carne, with vegetables and meat, or you can order a mixta. Paella mixta. What is paella mixta? It's got a bit of everything. It includes seafood, okay? So you get the meat, the vegetables, and the seafood, el marisco. If you just want a seafood paella, you just order paella de marisco. That one is very popular in tourist destinations. However, vamos a ponernos serios. Can we establish, please, that paella never, ever, ever has chorizo? Mm -mm. If you see on a menu paella con chorizo, run away. That place, it's not authentic, it's not Spanish, it is most likely a tourist trap. And you're about to overpay for a meal that's not going to be very good. Plato numero dos, dish number two, patatas bravas. This one is one of the favorites, patatas bravas. I mean, it's just potatoes with a spicy salsa, with spicy sauce. What could go wrong, right? Patatas bravas. This is a very simple tapa. Sometimes, very often, you get it for free as you order your drink in Spain. You just say, una Coca-Cola, por favor. And they bring you the Coca-Cola and some patatas bravas sometimes. Other times, you might need to order it and you can just say, una ración de patatas bravas. Una ración, that means a portion, a portion of something. So, una ración de bravas. You don't want a full portion, you can just order media. So instead of una de bravas, you can say media de bravas. There are some places that you order una ración and they bring you a plate like this. It's insane. De locos. Okay, so you might want to ask, uh, ¿cuál es el tamaño? What's the size? ¿Cómo es de grande? How big is the portion? ¿Cómo es de grande? How big is it? Hemos visto paella. Hemos visto bravas. We've seen paella, we've seen bravas. And now, gazpacho. This one is one of my favorite, guys. Gazpacho. Yes, I am talking about that cool tomato soup that I know it's not that popular, especially when you look at it and you're like, wait, this is tomato soup? 
Why is it called? All I can say is please give it a chance, give it a go. It's so, so tasty. Especially this originated, you need to think that this originated in the south of Spain, in the Andalusia region, where it's absolutely boiling hot in the summers and most of the year actually. So you need something cool, something refreshing, and gazpacho just makes it. It's made out of raw blended vegetables, and obviously the main protagonist is tomato. And it's not only refreshing, but it's also one of the healthiest dishes you can have. I batch cook gazpacho in the summer and in spring. I'm going to start doing it very soon if I can find the right tomatoes in England. Not an easy task, let me tell you. But I batch cook it and I just leave it in the fridge and I have like a glass of it every day. It's just packed with vitamins and goodness. It's so, so good, guys. Give it a go. There's so many recipes online. Gazpacho. There's also other varieties of gazpacho, like gazpacho manchego, I like the gazpacho tradicional. And there's another variety of gazpacho that they don't call it gazpacho, it's called salmorejo. You will see that in many places advertised. Sometimes they have gazpacho, sometimes they have salmorejo. Salmorejo is a bit thicker, it's got a lot more bread in it. I love both. I love salmorejo as well. They sprinkle some ham on top of it sometimes, jamón serrano. Están los dos buenísimos. Gazpacho is the more traditional one, and I feel that it's healthier, to be fair. So I normally have gazpacho. But you can try both. Número cuatro, calamares. Calamares, what are they? Calamares are simply breaded calamari. They are everywhere by now. They normally serve them with alioli, which I know you are all familiar with. And yeah, they, they've become very popular all over the world. I've literally tried them everywhere I've been on holiday, I have seen them on menus all over the world. Calamares, los calamares. And again, you can order una ración or media ración. Okay, calamares, squid. That's all they are, squid. Now, believe it or not, this is one of the most traditional dishes in my city, Madrid. Um, I don't know why really, because we are the furthest cities away from the sea in Spain. We are in the middle. Estamos en el medio y no tenemos mar. We don't have the sea, but we get a great seafood selection. And if you go to Plaza Mayor, the main plaza in, in Madrid, you can find a place called, there's two places. My favorite, mi favorito, it's called La Campana. My dad showed me this place and he's always been going there to get bocata de calamares. Why do I go like this? Because it's a huge calamari baguette. I did a short about it, guys, and you get a huge calamari baguette. I think it was for like 350 euros when I last went there. It's like a fish and chip shop, very, very old traditional Spanish shop, and they just pour, they're just constantly frying all those calamaris. It's great, I love it, me encanta. Pasamos a la número cinco, another very popular one, number five. I know you are all going to know what churros are, but do you know what porras are? I'm putting them both together, churros and porras. We all know that they are these tasty deep fried pastries that we have everywhere. There's vans going all over fiestas populares with the sign churros on it. I've seen them in England, I've seen them in Spain. I, I know they're very popular in places like Mexico. They're very popular everywhere. Who does not like churros? This fried dough fritters have spread all over the world, basically, and I don't blame them. What is the difference between churros and porras? Okay, churros are the skinny looking ones, the ones that come like in a, in a, that kind of shape, okay? Those are the churros. They're small, they're thin, they're really crispy, okay? Those are the churros. However, the porras over here, they're longer, they're thicker, they're the chunkier version of churros. I have a churreria in Spain near my parents' house, and I remember on Sundays, my dad used to go to the churreria to buy some churros and some porras for breakfast. They were extremely cheap. We used to get in the newspaper like loads of them, like 10 of them, maybe 10 porras and 10 churros for very, very, very little money. When I'm talking very little, I'm talking no more than two euros. Honestly, it was so, so cheap. Now I'm assuming that with the inflation they've gone up, but they were so cheap, super baratos. And since I'm recommending you some places in Madrid, my favorite one is San Ginés. It's the most traditional chocolateria and churreria in the city. 
San Ginés. It's very traditional and very popular amongst tourists and it's where everyone goes to get some churros and porras. However, I have recently tried Chocolaterías Valor a bit further up in the city center as well and they do like a hybrid guys between the churros and the porras. Oh, estaba buenísimo, estaba de muerte. It was to die for. Buenísimo. Número 6. Jamón con melón. Ham with melon. Simple as that. Sounds weird. It sounds a bit like pineapple and ham. It works. Believe me, it definitely works. Now this one, I think the Spaniards are claiming it as, as our own. I genuinely think, and I've been researching a little bit, I think it comes from Italy. And the Italians still do the mixture with parma ham and melon, okay? And I think we we got it from them and now we are advertising it as our own. Whatever it might be, I don't know, it's absolutely delicioso. It just works and it's a delicatessen, guys. Um, it's as simple as buying jamón, serrano or ibérico. You know the ibérico is the best quality ham, ibérico. And you just mix it with a little bit of melon. But it can't be any melon, it has to be the green one, the melon piel de sapo. This one. Melon piel de sapo. I actually find that one in England sometimes and we make it at home, melon con jamón. But in Spain, you have melon piel de sapo everywhere throughout the whole summer. Oh, qué rico, por favor. Qué bueno. Número siete. Please, Catalonians, do not come from me. <laughs> okay, this dish is called pan con tomate or as I like to call it, and I know many, many places in Spain call it like that, pan Tumaca, pan tumaca. However, this dish originated from the Catalan, Aragonese and Balearic cuisine and they call it pan am tomatec. And apologies because this is Catalonian and I do not know how to pronounce it, but hopefully you can understand more or less. You get the gist. It's basically bread with tomato. Pan con tomate. This is one of my favorite breakfasts in Spain and you can have it everywhere. You go to any bar in Spain and they would have the option of pan tumaca or pan con tomate, okay? They give you a slice of bread and you do it yourself. They give you a bit of olive oil and a bit of tomato. Normally the tomato is already um, grated for you, ready to be spread. But in Catalonia, I've seen that they spread it themselves, just kind of going like this on the bread, okay? Um, yeah, so it's just that. Pan con aceite y con tomate. Now, I don't want to be a purist. I did a short showing you how I have it. And I know people have it in different ways. I know that some people also add garlic to it. Ajo, however you have it. Está buenísimo. Give it a try. It's a must have. Give it a go. Croquetas. Ay, qué ricas las croquetas. Me encantan las croquetas. Me flipan. Uh, I mean, I can't live without croquetas. I love them. They're one of my favorite dishes. They're not very healthy, but hey ho, you need to try them, guys. Croquetas are not the same in Spain as in other parts of the world. I've tried croquetas sometimes in England and they give you potato croquettes. Massively disappointed. You can't advertise that as croquetas. <laughs> no way. If they don't have bechamel sauce inside, I don't think they can be called croquetas. What are croquetas? Croquetas are a deep fried roll consisting of bechamel sauce, that's like the binder, okay, of it, combined with other ingredients such as jamón, ham, pollo, cheese, boletus. If you see croquetas de boletus en un menú, that is mushroom croquettes. Muy, muy buenas. Queso, for example, cheese croquettes. You can even have cocido croquettes made from the leftovers from the cocido stew with all the ham and all those meats. Ay, que ricas. And sometimes you will see in the menus that they say croquetas de la abuela. Grandma's croquettes? Yes, my friend, grandma's croquettes. That means that they're very traditional, authentic croquettes. They have put a bit of everything inside of them. They normally have ham, they normally have chicken. Just ask, what do croquetas de la abuela have? But they're very, very, very popular. Croquetas de la abuela and croquetas caseras. Uh, they vary in sizes. You might want to ask, como son de grandes before you order a ración. They normally tell you the units, cuatro unidades. Cinco unidades, okay? So you can count how many people you've got in the group and at least you need to have 
una croqueta cada uno. And if you haven't tried croquetas, believe me, there is no one in this world that does not like croquetas. Número 9. Now this one does need this. El pulpo. Pulpo a la gallega. Pulpo a la gallega o pulpo a feria. They call it fair octopus, but the rest of the country we call it octopus the Galician way. And what's the Galician way of eating octopus? They cook the octopus, they boil it, then they chop it, and then they put it on a wooden plate with a bit of aceite de oliva, olive oil, sprinkled with sal gorda, rock salt, y pimentón, paprika. Sometimes they put as a base Cachelos, which are some small potatoes traditional from the area of Galicia. Cachelos con pulpo, or sometimes it's the pulpo on its own. Y también los sirven con pan. They also serve it with bread. And I can't tell you how good is this pulpo. Oh, es increíble. Está buenísimo. And again, it's quite healthy. It's quite a healthy meal. It's just seafood, okay? So, muy, muy rico y bastante sano. La última es mi preferida. The last one is my favorite one. But first, are you enjoying this? Do you like to learn more about culture in Spain, language, and all of that? Give me a follow if you haven't yet, please, and click that like button so it helps me to keep on producing this free content for you guys. Numero 10! Number 10 is the Spanish omelette. Tortilla de patatas, okay? Spanish omelette. Potato omelette is the literal translation. I do this one at home all the time, and I have to say it's the star dish on any party. I did it the other day uh, at my work, and honestly, people were fascinated by it. They love it. And it's quite an easy dish because it consists on patatas, potatoes, huevos, eggs, and olive oil. Aceite de oliva. Aceite de oliva. All of that together. Oh, wait, I've forgotten the most important ingredient. Onions. Cebollas, cebollas. Now, there are some people that claim tortillas should not have onions. Let me tell you, those people don't know what they're talking about, okay? If you're gonna have a real tortilla, you need to be on the side of the cebollistas and you need to have it with onion, guys. Otherwise, bah, it's rubbish. It's no tortilla. It might be another type of tortilla, but not tortilla de patatas. You need to put onion in there. Patatas, cebolla, Aceite y huevos, ¿de acuerdo? Now, in Spain it's so popular, like I say, we make it for every single party, um, even, there's, there's even contests about the best Spanish omelette, okay, in, in Spain, and it's just an essential part of the Spanish cuisine. It's just as important as paella, really. It's such a traditional and essential dish of our cuisine. And if you haven't tried it, what are you waiting for? because it's the perfect dish, honestly. I'll make a video if you want to showing you how I do it and if you want to copy the tricks that I've developed through the years. Y ya está, chicos, that's all I had to say. Top 10 Spanish meals. Which ones have you tried and which ones have I missed out? Muchas gracias, nos vemos. See you en el siguiente video, in the next video. Adios.